Okay, good morning. We're about to get started uh, for the 45 minute yoga class at 11 a.m. Uh, you won't need any equipment for today's class, uh, so you'll just need yourself. And if you happen to have a yoga mat, that's great. You can use a yoga mat, uh, or if not, you can just use the floor around you. Uh, just make sure that uh, before you start class, Take a quick look around you, make sure you don't have anything that you could trip over or bump into, make sure your workout space is clear of any hazards. Um, and throughout class, always make sure to take breaks as needed. Uh, always go at your own pace. If at any point you feel or experience any faintness, dizziness, pain, or shortness of breath, uh, you know your body best, Just stop exercising. Um, so we'll get started uh, and the focus on today's class will be a lot of um, chest openers, shoulder mobility, um, and then just moving into spine movement. So we'll just, uh, the focus on it will be a lot of shoulders and spines for today. Uh, so we'll get started. So we'll make our way onto our mat. I'm going to make my way to my mat behind me. Um, and we're going to start in a seated position. So we're going to go onto our mats. A little bit darker today where I'm at. So I thought that the ambiance is kind of relaxing. So I felt we could start just by centering ourselves and grounding, coming into a seated position. So we'll start class just by bringing awareness to the body, work our way up into a few sun salutations to keep the body up and get ourselves nice and warm. Um, throughout the warm up period, we will be doing the shoulder and spine exercises. And then we'll make our way onto the floor, just for some floor seated postures. And then we'll make our way to Shavasana. At the end of class, when we start, um, or sorry, go into corpse pose or Shavasana, I always do like to give the option of joining in for a quick meditation um, just before we close class and go off to the rest of our day. That's kind of like the structure of the class. So coming into a seated position, you can cross the legs or have the legs be nice and long, whatever works best for you. I like to move the fleshier parts away from the glutes so that I'm sitting here, sitting onto the bonier edges. And then from here, just allow the arms to soften towards the knees. Maybe allow your eyes to soften here and even close. And just begin to tune in, perhaps with the eyes closed, just the space around you. So begin to notice the space that your body occupies within the four walls. Notice where you're seated in the room, perhaps on top of your mat. And begin to notice the parts of your body that are resting towards the earth or the floor. So Notice where your feet are resting, the thighs, the hips, bringing the awareness towards your upper body and your spine. Begin to notice the natural curves your spine has. And begin to bring a sense of elongation to the spine, almost as if it was stretching from top to bottom. <coughs> Excuse me. Notice the back of the neck, notice the shoulders. You bring a sense of buoyancy to the center of the chest or the heart center, almost as if the shoulders were expanding to either side of the room. So you feel the front of the chest nice and open. Cool. Notice the face. And then begin to notice your breath. So notice the natural inhales and exhales through the nose. <clears throat> Take a few more breaths here, breathing in and out. Notice how the ribs expand, lungs expand when you inhale and how everything falls back to the center body as you exhale. Do a couple more breaths here, just noticing the movement and flow of your breath as you breathe in and out through the nose. 
Maybe even beginning to sense calmness in the body on your next exhale. A sense of ease for one more breath. And then as you exhale, when you're ready, slowly opening up the eyes. Awesome, we're gonna come into a posture that's called waving grass. And it's kind of similar to how grass moves in the wind. Um, similar, we're just gonna use our arms. Hello. Actually, I'm just gonna make my way to the studio quickly. Yeah, because when people join, it's kind of hard to see. Welcome, we are just getting started. We're actually just starting in a seated position on our mat. <clears throat> Right, we're in a posture called waving grass, just to bring movement into the side body and the spine. We're going to inhale, lift both arms up to the sky, fingertips spread nice and wide. And then just like grass waving in the wind, we're going to take a nice deep, in, deep inhale, length into the spine. And then as you exhale, hinge over to your right side. So as you hinge over to the right, you're lengthening the left side body. Feel the fingertips nice and wide, stretching to the right side of the room here. One more breath, inhale to lengthen. As you exhale, come to center, and then over to the left side. So this time stretching the right side body. Reach the fingertips over to the left side of the room for one more breath, deep inhale. And then as you exhale, come to center, and then over to the right side. So this time, working at your own pace, just rocking from one side over to the other, just kind of moving the arms nice and fluidly from right into the center and to the left. And then as you're moving from side to side, just notice how the shoulders feel. Maybe you feel a bit better by bringing the palms further away. Two more breaths here. Can you draw the shoulders away from the ears for one more breath? And then when you're ready, come back through center and slowly lower the arms. We're gonna shrug the shoulders up over and around, just give them a nice little stretch here. And then from here, we're gonna come into a gentle twist. So we're gonna inhale, lift both arms up. As you exhale, left hand is gonna come to the right knee, right hand behind you. So you're bringing the spine into a gentle twist. Press that right palm behind you down towards the floor so that you can really bring a sense of integrity to the spine and really lengthen through the spine. From here, you're gonna take a nice deep inhale, belly drawn in. As you exhale, you're gonna very gently twist over to the right side. So one vertebrae articulating at a time, maybe one day looking past your shoulders. Take another deep inhale here, find a little strength in the spine. Exhale, maybe twist a little bit more. We're gonna inhale, lengthen. And then as you exhale, untwist and wind, coming back to center. We're gonna twist over to the left side this time. So inhale, lift both arms up. As you exhale, right hand to left knee this time, left hand behind you. Lengthening through the spine by drawing the abdomen in. And then as you exhale, abdomen still drawn in, very gently and slowly twisting over to the left side. Maybe looking past your shoulders, inhale once more. Exhale, gently twist. And then when you're ready, untwist and wind. You're gonna inhale, lift both arms one more time. As you exhale, palms face down towards the floor, or come down, fingertips spread nice and wide. And then from here, we're just lengthening the spine. <clears throat> so spread the 10 fingertips nice and wide. Notice the corner edges of the hips, they like to come up a bit. So root them down towards your, the earth. And then almost as if it's a pulling action, almost as if you're trying to draw the floor closer towards you, take a deep inhale and then lengthen through the spine as you pull the floor closer towards you. So it's a very subtle movement, but you'll notice that the shoulder blades move back and there's a sense of openness across the front of the chest. Press the 10 fingertips, find a sense of length through the back of the neck here for one more breath. Deep inhale. 
deep exhale and then come back to center into your seated position. Awesome. We're going to make our way into a tabletop position. So we're going to come onto the hand and the knees here. And then from here, we're just going to do a couple rounds of cat cows. So hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips, and then the tops of the feet can be flat on the mat or the toes may be curled. Whatever you feel brings the body more balance. So I'm doing a couple rounds of cat cows, sinking it to your breath. Take a deep inhale, draw the belly down, tailbone reaches up, and then you look slowly either forward or up slightly up towards the sky. Take a full inhale here, press through the palms and the fingertips. And then as you exhale, chin cuts into the chest. Very slowly begin to arc the spine like a Halloween cat up towards the sky. Pelvis draws forward. Hold here for a full cycle of breath. Then then on your next exhale, starting from the base of the spine, uncurling the tailbone up towards the sky. Belly draws down and you look forward. One more round here, full inhale. As you exhale, chin tucks in, you arc the spine towards the sky, pelvis draws forward, abdomen in. Pressing through the palms, you really feel the back of the shoulder blades open up. One more breath here. And then as you exhale, uncurl, I'm one. <clears throat> we're gonna bring the knees a nice distance apart here. We're gonna come into child's pose, but with a slight opening in the shoulders. So you're gonna press the tops of the feet down towards the mat, push the hips towards the heels. So you're coming into a child's pose position. And then from here, it's gonna be called puppy pose. So you're just gonna keep the arms nice and active here. Bring the forehead down towards the mat and then slowly lift the forehead. And you're gonna come into a tabletop position, but bring the forearms down. So at the beginning, you're just pushing back to bring movement into the hips with arms engaged, forehead resting. And then slowly as you rock yourself forward through table, the forearms come down but the legs are in a tabletop position. And then from here, you can push the, the hips back again and then the forehead rests on the mat. So just kind of play with this pose, moving through the hips, lowering the forearms and then lifting the forearms. Just kind of rocking back and forth. One more breath here. Okay, and then from here with the knees nice and wide, you're going to come into your child's pose position. So push the hips back, forearm down, forehead down towards your mat. And then from here, I'm just going to lift my head so that you can hear me momentarily, but you're going to come onto the elbows. And with the forehead resting on your mat, you're going to bring the palms back towards the shoulder blades. So you can either keep the palms lifted so that you're resting on the elbows palms facing each other, or for more of a challenge, you bring the palms together and bring the thumbs to rest in between the shoulder blades. So just resting here, opening up the front of the shoulder area, so the armpit chest. Taking a few breaths here, in and out through the nose. Imagining that the heart's face was lowering towards the earth with every exhale. One more breath here. At your own pace, if the fingertips are resting on the shoulder blades, begin to lengthen the arms. Palms root down, slowly come to the table. Awesome. So you're just opening up the shoulders there a bit. We're going to continue to do the shoulders. We're going to come into a posture called uh, well, it's like kind of like thread the needle, but with our arms. So we're going to press the palms into the mat. So we're in our tabletop position here. We're going to do the right side first. So the left palm stays rooted. You're going to inhale, open up. So you're reaching the right arm up towards the right to the sky, opening up through the right side body, lengthening through both arms. Take a deep inhale. And then as you exhale, you're going to bring that right arm and thread it behind the left arm. So the shoulder's gonna come down, you're gonna push the hips back as if the hips are coming into a child's pose position. 
resting the right shoulder down and then turning your head over to the left side so you're facing the right palm, right ear resting on the mat. So you're kind of threading that right arm behind the left. So by resting this right arm onto the mat or the earth beneath you, you're kind of pulling or protracting, drawing that right shoulder blade forward so it's opening up along the back side of the body. So really press down through the shoulder here. You can curl the back of the toes here for balance. The tops of the feet rooted. One more breath here. As you exhale, you're going to begin to unthread that right arm, bringing it back to how we started. So opening up, back up, there reaches up. Bring it up one more time. So wind through that right arm. As you exhale, bring it through, thread it through, right ear rests, shoulder rests all the way. Two cycles of breath here. One more cycle of breath. Slowly unthread, coming back to table. Awesome, we're gonna do the left side now. <clears throat> so we're gonna press that right palm down into the earth. And then from here, lifting, opening up the left shoulder, left side of the chest, left arm reaches up, full inhale here. Spread the left fingertips. As you exhale, begin to curl and thread that left arm behind the right. Left shoulder roots down, left ear rests onto the mat. Full cycle of breath here. As you exhale, you unthread, unwind, lifting that left arm back towards the sky, full inhale, and then exhale, threading it back. Hold here for a full cycle of breath. As you exhale, unhinge, unwind. Awesome. We're back in our tabletop position. Do yourself a little shake or shimmy, a little moment of freestyle. And then when you're ready, curl the back of the toes, lift the knees, find the your facing bow. So if you're feeling any sensations in the hamstrings and they're still feeling kind of cold for this morning, feel free to pedal up the feet. Shake the head yes, shake the head no. We're gonna come here into a passive stretch again. So we're gonna, <clears throat> listen carefully, we're gonna bring that left hand closer to the center. We're gonna bring that left foot a little bit closer. Left hand, left foot closer to the center of your mat. You're going to press down through that right leg, right heel. And you're going to press down through the right palm. So you're really stretching out through the back of the right hamstring. And then when you're ready, bring that left foot back in to meet the right. Coming into that downward dog again. So we're really bringing down to that right leg and then right hand to the center. And then bending the left leg. So by bending the left leg, you're allowing your right leg to engage more, hopefully rooting down towards the mat. So left side bent, right leg nice and long and active for one more breath. And then we're going to stretch the left side. So right hand goes back to the neutral position in downward dog. The left hand comes to center. You bring the left foot closer to the right, then right foot to right knee, lengthen through that left leg, left heel rooted. Hold here for a couple breaths. And then when you're ready, return back to your regular or neutral downward dog. Take a full inhale, exhale here. On your next breath, look forward in between the palms, walk or jump both feet forward. Allow your head to hang heavy here. Come into a forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, belly rises halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way up to standing. Arms come up. And then exhale, hands to either side. Awesome. Let's work our way into a couple sun salutations just to heat the body up. So from here, we're going to inhale, both arms lift. Exhale, hinge from the hips, fold forward. 
Inhale, belly rises halfway up. Exhale, fold, plant the palms, walk or jump, both feet back into plank. Descend or lower your weight, either through chaturanga or table. Baby cobra, really shine the heart forward, pressing the palms down. Finding your way into downward facing dog. In downward facing dog, take a full cycle of breath, full inhale, full exhale. On your next breath, right leg is going to reach up towards the sky, pointing the toes. Take a full inhale here. As you exhale, right foot floats in between both palms. High lunge here, root through both heels. Inhale up, find warrior one. The finding warrior one, the palms are either touching, leaning up towards the sky, or the palms are facing each other. <clears throat> you can find depth through that right thigh. Find that back leg nice and engaged, floated on a 45 degree angle. Heel is rooted. Hips are aiming towards the front end of the room. Take a full inhale here, lengthen through the spine. As you exhale, open up, bend through the elbows, find cactus arms. So palms face forward like you're giving someone a high five. Elbows to either side of the room here. And then from here, take a full inhale. As you exhale, bring the palms back behind you, create a fist with the hands. Root down through the fist so you feel an opening across the front of the chest. Begin to lengthen or release that right thigh here. Take a full inhale. And then as you exhale, begin to hinge over that right thigh. Maybe you bend that right knee so that forehead and knee touch. Take a couple breaths here. One more breath. As you exhale, bring the palms down to bring that right foot. Right foot steps back. Cycle through a flow. Leaving in downward facing dog. In downward facing dog, take two breaths here. Breathing in and out through the nose. One more breath. We're going to do the same posture on the left side. So when you're ready, inhale, left leg reaches back and up, pointing the toes. Full cycle of breath here as you exhale. Left foot, foot, float forward. Bringing both heels into the earth, coming up into the warrior one. And then opening up through cactus arms. Both heels rooted. You can lengthen that left leg. Create a fist with the palms. Open up through the chest here. And if you'd like, if the fist feels like it's too much, you can actually bring the palms to the low back, almost as if you're sliding your hands into imaginary pockets. Sometimes I even like this posture or this hand position a bit more because it really encourages the opening of the chest by drawing the elbows back. So I kind of like this one too, or this one, whichever works better for your shoulder mobility today. And then from here, the left leg lengthened, we need to hinge over. That left thigh, you can bend the knee here to allow forehead and knee to touch. Two breaths here. One more breath. When you're ready, release the palms down. Left foot steps back into plank, cycling through your flow. Leaving and downward facing dog. And down, we're facing down, take two breaths, breathing in and out through the nose, one more breath. When you're ready, as you exhale, look forward in between the palms, walk or jump, both feet forward. Inhale, belly rises halfway up, exhale, hold. Inhale, all the way up to stand, your arms come up, exhale, hands to either side. Awesome. We'll do one more flow here as we inhale, arms float up. Exhale, hold. Inhale, belly rises to a 90 degree, hands to the shins. Exhale, fold, plant the palms, walk both feet back. Cycling through your flow. Knee and downward facing down. And downward facing down, take a full cycle of breath. Deep inhale, deep exhale. 
right foot is going to come forward in between both palms high lunge root through the heels inhale come up warrior one opening up finding warrior two and warrior two here exalting your warrior so leaning back left hand can rest on the outer left thigh or wraps around the low back right arm reaches back behind you so you're lengthening through that right side body inhale here as you exhale you're going to windmill the arms and come into triangle so releasing that right thigh right palm can come down to the inside of the right foot or can rest on the thigh forearm on the thigh your choice left arm reaches up towards the sky here fingertips spread and hold here for two breaths One more breath here. As you exhale, look down, bring the palms, step the right foot back, and then cycle through a flow. Leaning in downward facing dog. <clears throat> and downward facing dog here, take a full cycle of breath. I'm going to come through the left side. So when you're ready, left foot floats forward, rooting the heels, coming up forward one. Opening up warrior two. So outer edge of the right foot is rooted, finding depth through that left thigh. We're going to exalt our warrior here. So you can bring the back right arm to wrap around the low back. we we'll rest on the outer right thigh. Left arms reach back, lengthening through the left side body. One more breath here. You're going to transition through triangle, releasing that left thigh, windmilling the arms either forearm to thigh, hand to shin, or hand on the inside of the left foot. Right arm reaches up. Two breaths here. One more breath. Look down towards that left foot. Frame the left foot with both hands and then excuse me, cycle through a flow. Meaning in downward, facing dog. In downward facing dog, take a full cycle of breath. Deep inhale, deep exhale. As you exhale, look forward in between the palms, walk or jump, both feet forward. Inhale, belly rises halfway up. Exhale, hold. Inhale, all the way up to standing. Arms come up. Exhale, hands to either side. Awesome. We're going to come into a couple static postures. So we're going to kind of play around with warrior three and eagle pose. So they're both balancing postures. Warrior three is really nice for integrating balance and bringing strength to the low body. And then the eagle posture is a balancing posture as well, but once creating that strength and momentum from the lower body, we're also able to use that to access an opening of the front chest. So just kind of have fun with it, play around, make sure there's no hazards around you. So we're gonna come into warrior three first, and we'll do warrior three, kind of incorporate into, into it a sun salutation, and then come into evil. So let's do warrior three first. Practicing just kind of slowly at our own pace. So in warrior three, I'm just going to bring the hands to the hips here, playing a nice balance. So kind of rock both feet forward and back. We're going to do the right side first. So root down through that left leg, lifting that kneecap so you feel the left thigh engaged. And you come onto the balls of the right foot here, so the right heel is lifted. And bringing more weight into that left leg, you're going to begin to float that left foot up. So the knee is still bent here, it's still fairly close to the body. You can even bring the knee closer to the torso and then using that momentum, begin to hinge from the hips and then begin to lengthen that leg back behind you. To bring integrity into the back leg, you can flex that right foot. And then from here with the hands, you can keep the hands at the hips. You can bring the arms out back behind you, fingertips facing the back wall. 
You can bring them out into airplane arms or for even more of a challenge out in front of you. <laughs> Play around with it as slow as you went in, you're going to come out. So slowly bringing that knee in, hugging it into the chest, and then bringing it down. We're going to do the other side. So bring down through that right foot, right knee engaged, hands to the hips. Take a full inhale here. You can just float that foot up, drawing the knee in, using that momentum as you exhale, bring that left leg back. And if it helps for balance to bring the hands to the chest here, I really like to do this. Flexing that left foot, lengthening through the crown of the head, crown of the head reaching forward here, one more breath. And then as slow as you went in, Bring that knee into the chest. And releasing now. Awesome. Let's incorporate one or three into your sun salutation. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, belly rises halfway up, hands to the shins. Exhale, fold, plant the palms, walk both feet back. Cycle through a flow. Leaning in downward facing down. Chin downward facing dog, take two breaths. One more breath. As you exhale, right foot comes forward in between the palms. Root through the heels, inhale up, warrior one. Exhale, hands to the hips. From here, we're going to come into warrior three. So we need to position more weight on that right foot. Leaning forward, floating that left leg back and up. Flex the left foot here. One more breath. As slow as you enter, the left foot comes down back into that warrior one stance. Bring the palms up. And then, similar to how we did that pose earlier when we were in child's pose with the thumbs resting in between the shoulder blades. And the palms in prayer. We're going to do the same thing. So we're going to lean back, arms and fingertips reach back. Stay here if this is enough. Or for more of a challenge, then the elbows, thumbs rest in between the shoulder blades. So the forearms are kind of acting like a little pillow for the side of the head, looking up. One more breath here. As you exhale, bring the palms down, right foot steps back into plank. Cycle through your flow. Meeting in downward facing dog. And downward facing dog, take two breaths. One more breath. When you're ready, left foot comes forward this time, rooting through the heels, rising up forward a lot. Inhale deeply as you exhale, hands to the hips. And then from here, you're going to position more weight onto that left foot. Bring it to almost as if you're hinging or lunging over to that left foot. Bring it down, you need to float that left leg back and up. Flex through the right foot. And bring the hands to either side like airplane wings. Play around, one more breath. Slowly bring that right foot down. Come back into warrior one, palms lift up, maybe palms touch, leaning back, stretching the fingertips towards the back wall, and then choosing to bend the elbows, opening up the heart center, allowing the heart to shine up to the sky, forehead, and gaze looking up. One more breath here. As you exhale, look down, plant the palms, step the left foot back. And then cycle through your flow. Leaning in downward facing dog. In downward facing dog, take a full cycle of breath. Deep inhale, deep exhale. And then work forward in between the palms, small bridge up, both feet forward. Inhale, hands to the shins, exhale. 
Inhale, all the way up, standing arms come up. Exhale, hands side to side. Awesome. Hopefully we'll, we're feeling a little bit warmer now. Just gonna take a quick look at the camera here. We're gonna come into eagle posture next. Eagle, you know, find a nice firm grounding with the feet. We're gonna do the right side first. So I'm gonna turn to face you at the beginning just so you can see what's going on. And you're, I'm gonna just turn to face the side so you can see the full posture. So I'm gonna bring the right palm out since we're doing the right side first, palm facing up. From here, you're just gonna bend that right knee, right foot behind you. You reach back behind and catch that right foot from the inside. So play around with this at first. So see how it feels to catch the foot from the inside as opposed to the outside and see how that feels for your shoulder. So for most of us, it might feel a little bit better if we catch the foot from the inside. That's how it works for me, but if it works better for you to catch from the outside. See how that feels. You want that openness of the shoulder blade though, aiming, aiming for the inside of the foot is what we're aiming for ultimately. But see how it feels. So root down through that left leg, lift through that left kneecap, so the left thigh is engaged. From here, the left arm is gonna inhale, float up to the sky. And then from here, you're gonna begin to hinge from the hips until you can't hinge anymore, sorry. And then you're gonna begin to kick that right leg out. As you kick that right leg out towards the sky, right foot lifts, that right arm is gonna reach forward and find the steady gaze. So opening up through the heart center, engaging that right thigh here. One more breath. And then as you exhale, unhinge, come back to center. We're gonna do the left side now. So the left palm comes out, left palm will catch the left foot. And then from here, right arm reaches up to the sky, lengthen through that right arm. So you're lengthening from opposite sides of the body. From here, begin to hinge from the hips. And so you can't hinge anymore. Then you begin to kick that left leg up. Kick, kick, kick. The more you kick, the more you lengthen with that right arm. One more breath. And then slowly come out. Awesome. I'm going to do. One more flow here, make our way to the floor. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, belly rises. Exhale, fold, plant the palms. Walk or jump both feet back. Cycle through your flow. <clears throat> Although this time, instead of meeting in downward facing dog, we're gonna all meet in child's pose. The knees nice and wide, forehead resting on your mat. Take a few extra long breaths here. Really notice how the rib cage moves along the back body. Soften through the hips. Couple more breaths here. One more breath. And then slowly rock the torso forward through table. We're gonna come into camel. So camel pose is one of the deepest back openings or chest openers. So we're gonna do this very slowly. So we're gonna curl the back of the toes here so that there's a little bit of lift in the heels. So that'll help us when we reach back to us to grab the heels if we get there today. And then we're gonna lift through the torso. So we're on our knees here. If there's any sensitivity to the knees, you can hold your mat up for extra cushion or bring a cloth or a blanket to the knees, only if there's sensitivity. And then from here, you're gonna bring your hands to those imaginary back pockets and slide them in there. Elbows are gonna reach back towards the back room. So from here, you're probably already feeling that openness across the front of the chest. Stay here if you'd like, or 
from here, begin to imagine that there's a zipper in the midline of the body. You're kind of zippering it up. So you're lengthening through the spine. As you lengthen, zip, zip, zip through the bottom. And it's a really tight jacket. So you kind of really have to lengthen before you lean back to zip up that midline zipper. So really lengthen through the spine. So you're not just jumping back. So the neck is going to come into the movement last. So really lengthen through the spine. Begin to hinge back, zipping up that imaginary zipper. Maybe you're towards the middle of the chest here through the thoracic spine. Pretend there's a string there, pulling the heart forward. Continue to zip that zipper up, working your way up to the front of the chest, heart center. And then maybe if you feel comfortable enough from here, you can begin to bring the hands down to the heels, only if it feels comfortable. So stay here if you're okay. Do not go any further and injure yourself. So just play around. Maybe just bring the hands lower along the glutes. And if it feels comfortable for your neck and you want to incorporate it, now would be the time to bring the neck back. So in whatever hand position you're in, the neck can still be incorporated. Two more breaths here. One more breath. And then slowly bring the spine back to center, chin parallel to the earth. Tops of the feet are going to root down to the mat. You're going to sit back onto the heels just momentarily. We're going to counteract that opening of this chest by just curling the spine forward and wrap it. So we're just going to we do a passive rabbit. So we're just going to bring the hands to the hips. Chin is going to curl into the chest here. You're going to make your spine into the smallest ball imaginable. So curling, 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 turning into a little tiny ball. Top of the head wraps onto the mat. Forehead and knees touch. Then you can bring the hands to the low back here just to rest. Oh, here the breath may be compressed. That's okay. Just one cycle of breath here, chin tucked into the chest. And chin is going to come up last as you begin to uncurl, unwind. We're going to make our way into the mat or our floor beneath us, coming into a laying down position for Shavasana. <clears throat> Before we get into Shavasana, we're just going to release the legs in a passive inverted here. So just lift the legs up towards the sky in your laying down position. Point and flex the feet here. Just let gravity pull the circulation in the opposite direction. Palms to either side of the body. Hold here for a few breaths. You can even rock the legs. Side to side, forward and back. And then only when you're ready, you can begin to allow the legs to soften, coming into that final resting posture, feeling the shavasana. So bringing the body into a conscious stillness, Letting the eyes soften and the breath soften the body. Completely melting here. Allowing the arms and shoulders to relax. Torso and abdomen softens on your next breath. Hips and thighs. Release into the earth. Just melting with your next exhale. You can choose to stay here exactly as you are. Or if you'd like to join in for a brief little meditation before we head off into the rest of our day, you're welcome to join as well. If you're joining in, just roll over to one side, preferably the right side, and press yourself up. 
You can keep the eyes soft here, maybe even still close if you're choosing to join in. And just kind of come into that seated position where we started class. Shavasana is still an acceptable posture right now. So choose whatever you'd like. If you're joining into the seated meditation part, just begin to plug in, hips plugged in. Feel a sense of buoyancy along the spine, plugging into the earth and lengthening all the way to the crown of the head, up towards the sky. Really been enjoying these moments of stillness with our mind and our body because so many things happening around us and in, in our lives that we're we have constant distractions and constant motion that it's not very often we allow ourselves to come into a conscious stillness. Our conscious stillness perhaps usually entails watching TV or going to bed. And by those moments, by the time we reach those moments, brain really isn't actively involved. It's kind of wanting to check out. So in these moments of conscious stillness, I really get to sit in and see what happens. And that's where the magic really starts to unfold. The thoughts flood into your mind. And what do you do? You want to move, you want to resist. Although if we find that half a second where we acknowledge that movement or that monkey mind of ours and actually consciously choose to ignore it and find stillness and simply breathe. Just tap into that. Breathe in and out through the nose. Notice how the breath moves through the lungs and the rib cage. We'll do a couple rounds of breathing exercises together just to focus on our breath a little bit more. So we're gonna count our breath, our inhale and exhale from one through four as we inhale and count down from four to one as we exhale. So we'll all, <coughs> excuse me, prepare here together by exhaling. I was really ready to exhale there. And then we're going to inhale deeply through the nose for a count of two, three, four. Exhale deeply through the nose for three, two, one. Two more rounds. Inhale deeply through the nose for two, three, four. Exhale deeply through the nose for three. Two, one. Just acknowledge the stillness you created and the calm waters of your breath. Almost as if your breath were to mimic the sound of the ocean, just washing away everything you no longer need. Thank you for joining. I hope you have a one. Weekend. Please remember to stay hydrated. I remember that class runs for 45 minutes every Tuesday and Fridays. Uh, Tuesdays at 3.30, Fridays at 11. We do like to start on time. So we appreciate if you tune in right at the beginning of class or a couple minutes before. Um, but yeah, hope to see you again soon. Thank you for joining. I'll stick around for a couple minutes in case anyone has any questions or comments they'd like to leave in the chat. Um, until we see each other again, namaste.